All right, and we are live once again. I just had to do a quick test of my stream to make sure that it was working all right here. So we got it up and running. This time I wanted to do this as a live, just in case any questions came in, as I can kind of break them down in real time. I actually just did a live stream over on my Instagram page the other day, uh, at James underscore films, linked in the description of this video, so be sure to check that out as well. And going forward, I'm gonna be doing a lot more of these kind of quick streams over there, breaking down a scene, answering viewers questions and just kind of having a fun time. It's a, it's a really good time. So definitely check that out. Throw me a follow so that you're notified when those uh, take place. Tonight, I wanted to walk through an amazing new add-on from one of my buddies, B Production. They're just consistently crushing it with their add-ons and creating stuff that I really find myself using for almost every single project. And this next add-on here is once again, just an incredible piece. And I honestly, I jumped at the opportunity to test this out when he mentioned that this was in development. Super thrilled to actually have it in hand and start to play around with it. So over the past couple of days, I've been working on it in my Blender scenes, just getting used to uh, kind of the interface and also playing around a lot with one feature that I saw was going to be included in this that I was thrilled about, which is the integration. If it's on this page here, I think it's up here a little bit higher. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, the integration with GeoScatter, which is another phenomenal add-on. If you've not played around that one before, it is a great way to kind of consolidate all of your different asset libraries and just have a pretty phenomenal uh, way to just kind of organize things and work through uh, and create really quickly uh, with a, a lot of kind of preset uh, scenes. So you basically just can click a uh, plus sign on your GeoScatter library and it will bring in your scene for you really quickly and kind of populate everything. It looks awesome so it's a lot of fun uh and great to kind of play around with and this actually integrates super well with the cloud library and i'll show you how to use that it's a little bit different than typically you would use geoscatter so we'll get to that in a little bit but first just want to talk about this add-on uh, in terms of cost as well too 35 dollars for what you get it's pretty insane Typically, if you're trying to get VDB clouds, you either have to create them yourself in expensive software like Houdini. You can do kind of free trials, but you're pretty limited in terms of the settings you can do, the render settings, the output. Uh, so that is one option, obviously, is creating it yourself. In Blender, there are new ways actually to kind of create clouds uh, a little bit better, but I feel like the quality that you get is just not quite there. I actually have a tutorial on my page where I talk about turning your logo into a cloud, where I kind of walk through that methodology. Uh, it's still not quite the best, honestly, in terms of the results that you get. Um, so that's obviously one way is creating on your own. There are also a lot of great places online where you can purchase VDB collections. There are quite a few creators who've created different things that you can purchase to use, uh, but very quickly it becomes very expensive. So this one is a great alternative for Blender. So it's, it's made with Blender in mind. It integrates super well with your asset browser and also obviously with Geoscatter, as I just mentioned. There is a, a launch offer here to kind of get a little bit of a discount on it too if you're watching this video as I'm posting it here in real time. So it's a great one to kind of jump in on as well. Uh, but it's just a, a great resource. It's super easy to literally just drag and drop clouds into your scene. And I'll walk through kind of some of my favorite clouds that I've worked with so far in the different asset library here. And also obviously the shader that comes along with it. It already comes with a principal volume shader hooked up and a lot of flexibility there with actually just changing settings like the temperature to kind of get more of a smoky feel or a kind of a fiery feel to it. Uh, and then also you can animate them a little bit too. Uh, there's some interesting ways to do this and obviously GeoScatter as well. Uh, they're all also kind of real clouds as well. So a bit about me as well. I actually have a background in atmospheric science. So I was kind of excited to see that they'd broken these uh, down into different altitude clouds. So you actually have a little bit more physically accurate clouds. If you're actually making your scenes, uh, you can actually think about where these clouds physically in real life would be in your sky. Uh, but you can also get a little bit more surrealist like I typically like to do with my renders and just put a cloud like smack dab in the middle of the scene like this example file that you see here uh, from Renante Martinez. So really fun uh, library here. And let's just open up in Blender and kind of talk a bit about how it works. So first of all, once you download it, it comes in a zip file that you're actually going to have to unzip. I use something called Zev7zip to extract all the files. Uh, put it in a place where you remember it and then you're actually going to go over to Edit Preferences. And then you can go to file paths and in file paths, you can locate where that folder is and it's gonna populate it into your asset library. So if I open up my asset browser here, you can see this is what it looks like. It's kind of like a little bookshelf kind of displayed here. So you click on the asset browser and it will open up uh, your assets that you have. I've got a bunch of different ones that I use, a bunch of kit bash models, some models that I've created myself, a variety of other things that I have imported here. And one of the things I have that just popped up the other day is the Cloudscapes library. So if I click on the Cloudscapes, you actually see it's broken down into altitude uh, heights of these clouds as well. So if I click on Alto Cumulus, 
it pulls up all the clouds that would be located at that location in the atmosphere. You also have some fun ones like miscellaneous. You got a bunch of different numbers uh, as clouds, a cube, the default cube, of course, you have to have as a cloud. Uh, really fun to see that as well. You also have a heart, a smile, rectangle, star, and the euro, of course, very important to have uh, as well. One other one I really like is these smoke trails, which you can kind of simulate the contrails that you'd see from an airplane flying overhead as well, uh, which just looks really great. So a, a lot of those super easy to drag and drop. And so we'll just kind of show you what this looks like in a scene in Blender. So I'm gonna be using cycles for this. I personally find cycles to be the best. I'm also gonna click on denoising here just so that I'm not fighting through an insane amount of noise because one issue you'll see with these clouds and with volumetrics in general is that very quickly you'll get a lot of noise introduced into your scene when you hit render. So I'm gonna pull up the rendered mode here and I'm just gonna start off by adding in a sky texture. This kind of gives me the most flexibility to kind of adjust some of the lighting here and kind of just change some things out here. So I'll just bring this in here and then I'm also gonna clip this so it's just rendering my render region. So I've got this here. We can kind of adjust some of the settings here as we see fit and rotate our sun around here. So I kind of just want a little bit more of like a blue sky showing here in the background. So this kind of stands out a bit more. And let's just bring in our Cumulus 10 model here. So it'll take a second to load up here, but what you'll notice is, and this is kind of just a, a known, I guess, not necessarily bug, but just, I guess, feature more so of this. It kind of initially comes in tilted at a 90 degree angle. So all you have to do is just hit R on your keyboard, X and then 90, and this just puts it back to horizontal here. So. As you notice, the way I've kind of integrated my windows here, you can actually see my shader editor below here. And it actually comes clicked in with a principal volume texture hooked into the volume material output. And so this is already driving a texture. So just right out of the box, you already have a textured cloud here in our scene. And if I kind of drag and drop this over, let me just turn on or turn off the overlays so that you can actually see this a bit better. You already have a really nice looking cloud right in your scene, uh, right off the bat. So it's a great thing to just literally just be able to drag and drop a cloud and have it in your scene. You can bring in another one too if you want to have a second one here in the scene. We can kind of start to populate out our scene a little bit more. What I'm noticing though when I bring these clouds in is they're looking a little bit lumpy. And so what I can actually do is go over to the shader editor here and I'm going to just turn the density down a little bit here. So this kind of just softens up the cloud a little bit, makes it look a little bit more puffy and just kind of overall I feel like a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. That looks quite nice. And one thing too to note about clouds in general in Blender is the lighting is essential to making these look realistic and believable. Any subtle changes to lighting will drastically change how your overall cloud will look in your final render. So really keep in mind how you're actually lighting your scene. And oftentimes what I'll do is actually just will turn off lights. So let's actually just right off here, just remove the sky texture so we just don't have any lights in the scene. And I'm gonna work off a couple point lights. And I wanna talk about some tips that I've learned kind of over experimenting with this, uh, lighting clouds in general, even before using this add-on, just kind of my approach to lighting uh, these types of environments. So I'm gonna add in a point light here. I'm just gonna hit Shift A on my keyboard and pull in a point light. And we're gonna pull this over behind our cloud. So we're gonna kind of have like a framing, a nice framing behind this, so kind of like a ethereal glow if you're looking through the camera mode at this. And so I'm gonna make this a larger radius just so it's kind of filling up behind our cloud. And if I kind of just scale this up here, I can kind of see what that's doing. And then I'm gonna really just crank up the power here just to show you what this looks like. So we're starting to get kind of like a nice rim lighting on this cloud. So if I turn this on and off, you'll see what that did. So initially no lighting on it. Now you're starting to get this kind of nice rim light creeping in here. If I crank it up even more, you'll see that will creep even more into our scene. So I really like to do that just to kind of outline the cloud a little bit more, just to give it a little bit more separation from the background that you're working with. But what you'll notice is it's still quite dark, obviously in the front here. So what I'll do is actually we'll duplicate this light just so we have it. And I'll move this over to this front side here. So we're starting to get kind of a little bit of a, a light from the side, making this look a little bit more 3D and kind of pulling it a little bit off the background. And for the background, let me just add in a super simple plane and just show you a little bit more about how I kind of work with different textures and lighting as well here. So I'm just gonna add in just a background here. And let me just extrude this out here and just pull this straight up. So we kind of have like this sitting on like a studio background, if you will. Uh, just make a super simple studio background. And then I'm gonna just give this like a, a blender kit texture here. Let's like maybe give this like an asphalt material or something like that or whatever kind of comes up here is, is fine just for this demo. Uh, just something that's a little bit different colored from our uh, cloud here. Something that's a little bit grayer, uh, maybe like this could be good. Uh, let's see, I don't wanna spend too much time sifting through here to find one. Let's see, something that's not too reflective. Maybe we just go with this like brick one for now here. So I'm just gonna add this in, that looks kind of crazy. So let's just UV unwrap this here. 
Okay, so that's fine. So it doesn't really have to, to look believable, but this is just for lighting purposes. Uh, so what I wanted to show you here is, so we have this light on the left side here, kind of filling in our frame. But what you'll notice is actually is impacting the surface here as well. So if I turn this on and off, you'll see it's adding a lot of light to the surface. And sometimes that is okay. That's maybe fine for your scene. Maybe there is like a large light source, like a lamp or something. If you've seen some of my renders in the past where there's like a lamp that's visible there, uh, that is sometimes what you'd want to have uh, for your scene. However, sometimes it could be kind of competing with the other elements of your scene and it like kind of is overpowering. And so you can actually go into the lighting properties and impact what parts of your scene, what is this light visible to? So if I click on the visibility section here on the right and scroll down, you can see that right now the ray visibility is open for everything. So we have the diffuse, glossy, transmission, and the volume scatter. So this volume scatter is what's impacting that cloud. So if I turn this on and off, you'll see it's no longer impacting that cloud if I turn that on and off. And so I only want this light to be impacting the cloud in the scene. I don't want it to be affecting the texture below or any other textures or any other objects in my scene for that matter, except for the volumetrics in my scene, so the cloud elements here. So I can just turn off transmission, glossy, and diffuse. And now you'll see that light is only impacting our cloud layer. So that is looking a lot better because we're not blowing out and overexposing our scene elsewhere. And Dr. Is Prime, thank you so much for joining. This is actually not pre-recorded. You're getting this alive in the flesh. This is me recording over here from my studio. So thanks so much for joining. And if you have any questions as I kind of go through here, I'm happy to answer uh, any of these that come up as well. So thank you so much for joining. Uh, yes, yeah, so today we're just talking all about clouds. Uh, this is the B Production Cloud Library. Once again, I will just open this up so you can see it here. We are working with the Cloudscapes add-on uh, from B Production. This just released this week. Uh, it's got a little bit of a discount. I'm just going to shout that out once more. Cloudscape 25. Definitely check that out. Uh, as, a, as always, I'm a big fan of working with his asset libraries. They're super fun. And this one is no different from the rest. So yeah, so we've got that lighting there that's affecting our scene really nicely. It's only affecting that cloud and you can kind of move this around and change things up. But what you notice sometimes is this is a little bit kind of noisy, a little bit kind of blobby here. So if you want to kind of impact some of your render settings, uh, volumetrics are notoriously very render intensive. It takes a lot of time. Uh, so it's, it's a bit tricky to kind of work through and make sure that these render properly. So keep an eye over here on the step rate for your render and your viewport. And if I kind of hover over this, it gives us a little bit of information about what the step rate is. And so it is to globally adjust detail for volume rendering on top of automatically established step size. Higher values reduce render time, lower values render with more detail. So effectively you're creating kind of like a different box size. If you think about all these as individual pixels in your screen, if you change the step rate to something like, I don't know, 0.1 in this viewport, it's gonna take a lot longer to render because it's a lot finer, but you can kind of see when that snapped there for a second. It's now rendering this in a bit finer detail art cloud here. So you get a lot more information out of that. But again, keep an eye on that because it's really gonna slow down. You can see already this is taking a lot longer and kind of is lagging out a bit as I kind of zoom out here. So definitely keep an eye on that, that setting there and maybe just adjust that once when you're testing things out and then also just snap it back to whatever one in the viewport here. And yeah, and this live stream uh, is actually gonna be available after it's live. So if you're just checking it out later, uh, if you're watching this you know, post live, definitely throw it a like and uh, check it out. Uh, and hopefully you learn a little bit more about, I guess my process for lighting these clouds, a little bit more about the add-on as well, but this will be available after the live is over. The benefit of being here during the live is obviously you get to interact with me, ask some questions as I kind of work through, if you have specific questions as I'm kind of designing these things. So definitely uh, there is some incentive to join. So make sure you're subscribed with the bell notification on so that you can check these out when they happen in the moment. And I want to thank once again, Dr. Morris Prime for joining. And now Mr. Glissy is joining as well. Thank you so much for joining and uh, taking some time here out of your evening or morning or wherever you are in the world to join the live stream. Very thrilled to have you online here. Uh, so yeah, so that is one way you can adjust these volumes. But say that it's still not really looking like you want it to look, but it's really hard to kind of make sense settings and notice exactly what's going on. One other tip I have for kind of adjusting the volumetric settings that you're looking at is to hit control B on your keyboard. And now you've got this kind of cross hair selected here. And over on your rendered side, you can actually click once, left click once. Oops, I got to hit control B and then release that and then left click once. And then you can drag over to a specific part of your render. And now Blender is only going to render that one square or rectangle that you have selected. So if I zoom in now, it's only gonna be rendering that one part of my scene. 
Uh, so it looks really great and you can actually kind of see obviously a lot more detail. I'm actually just for a second here, gonna turn off the uh, viewport denoising just so that we're not really fighting through too much noise. We can see a little bit more of what our final cloud shape is gonna look like. So this is a really great way to kind of isolate specific areas of your cloud as you're kind of trying to refine details and, and specifically the lighting. So say I want this to be a little bit more in shadow there, I can kind of move that over and then let's really like crank this up and maybe give this like a little bit of warmth. So it's kind of like an evening or like a sunrise kind of glow to it. So we got like a little bit of like a pinkish hue kind of hitting this as well. So that's just one way to isolate this. And if you want to snap out of this mode, one way you can do it is to uh, just click over here and then you can snap on and off render region. But another way I like to do it is just with the keyboard, you just hit control alt and B and it just snaps back out. Uh, that's the hotkey, but it obviously is now rendering everything. So I'm just gonna click on render region. So now we're just rendering what is in the frame of our camera here. So that is a quick way to kind of adjust lighting. Obviously, I like to do a lot with just the HDRI off the bat. So I had the sky texture in and originally when I was pulled this up here, uh, but what I also recommend is obviously to import an HDRI because you're gonna get a lot more color variation. And I've talked about this quite a bit in some of my other tutorials, but HDRIs are really the go-to for lighting initially in your scene, throwing some initial color, some initial saturation uh, to different elements in your scene. And you really do notice the difference between that and kind of a solid background like Blender's default sky texture. So let me just turn off this plane so you can actually see the sky texture here. So the sky texture is initially kind of coming in with a little bit of variation, you can see. It's kind of trying to simulate what an atmosphere would look like. Uh, but it's pretty basic, uh, kind of out of the box. You can obviously make some adjustments here to kind of change things up a bit, but it's not really going to go too far. Whereas an HDRI is based on a real image that was taken, you know, in the wild. Uh, so you actually have some really great uh, real colors and real saturation, real lighting coming initially. And then you can amplify this. And this is what I talk about, kind of the second step for lighting. So you bring in your HDRI, and then you can amplify the directionality of that light with a sun lamp. And this is always my go-to usually to start off all of my lighting. And then from there, I can add in additional lighting to kind of see fit. So let me just turn off these point lights for a second here. So say we have our HDRI that we brought in then I can actually add in a sun lamp and kind of choose that directionality and then maybe adjust the color a little bit to match my background and then crank its strength up a bit. And you already have a really nice initial lighting setup with just the sun lamp here. I don't have an HDRI in uh, the scene currently, but this is kind of the way I start off all my lighting. And then from there in particular for clouds, you really do need to spend quite a bit of time with the points, I feel like, to really kind of make sure that things are looking uh, how you want them to, that you're getting the right shading, the right lighting on your scene here as well. So that is the lighting overview for clouds. Uh, definitely make sure you take a lot of time with this. This is something I always revisit quite a bit as I'm working through my scenes, just because some stuff works, some stuff doesn't. And it's always helpful if you're feeling stuck to just take a step back, kind of get a fresh look at it later, maybe get some inspiration by looking outside at some real clouds. Try to see what shapes you see in the clouds. Try to think about, you know, is that a lamb jumping over a fence there? Is that a face that you see in the cloud moving through? And then come back and then recreate what you saw in real life in Blender. Uh, that's always a, a fun thing to do. So yeah, so this is my process for creating clouds. And now I wanted to just actually remove this cloud. Let me just take off uh, these points for a second here. And I'm gonna talk about the other feature of this Cloudscapes here. So Cloudscapes obviously has this great library of all kinds of different clouds. I kind of previewed some of these amazing clouds that they have here. Uh, the shader I should talk a little bit more about in a second too, once I kind of add in uh, the next step here. But you also get 29 biomes for Geoscatter. And so uh, if you're not familiar with Geoscatter, I'll do a little quick overview here. So I've got this add-on enabled. And typically what Geoscatter does is you add in like a plane or, or terrain or something. Let me just scale this up here and give it a little bit of subdivision in my edit mode here. Uh, so we've got like a little plane to kind of work with here. And so the way Geoscatter works is you have this eyedropper tool over in your emitter properties, and you can use this to select what surface you want to scatter particles and things on here. And out of the box, Geoscatter does come with a couple of default biomes. You can just scatter whatever objects you have in your scene. So say I've got like, I don't know, a cone here that I want to scatter on my scene. What I can actually do is scatter an object. You can have it uh, just this thing here. And you can just hit a different preset here. So they got a bunch of different presets. Let me choose this one. And then I can hit to scatter object and it's kind of scattered it quite large. 
uh, but I can actually go over and then tweak the uh, scaling of this here. So if I wanted to kind of change the scaling, I could click on default scale and let's just scale this down quite a lot. So you can see it's scattering our cone on our scene here. And there's a, a variety of different parameters once you actually scatter an object. The distribution is obviously a huge one. You can kind of change the number of instances that you have per square meter, obviously making the scene a lot more dense when you kind of turn up that instances per square meter. You can also go for a specific count. So say I wanted, I know I wanted 200 of these on my scene. I can hit 200 in there as well. So if you just kind of wanted to bypass that, you can obviously check a bunch of different uh, methods for scattering. I'm not gonna be able to go into all the details of these settings, but he's got incredible documentation over on the scatter website to go through these. But I wanted to talk through kind of just generally how this thing works here before I show you how the cloud one looks. Uh, hey, Basin, thank you so much for joining. This is a really fantastic add-on. Uh, Geoscatter is actually not made by Groswald. It's a different crew. It's the uh, Scatter 5 team. If you ever use Scatter 5, they've kind of rebranded to Geoscatter. So this is their new add-on. It's another phenomenal one. It's over on the Blender Market as well. Uh, but one thing additionally with this, so this is how you initially scatter, scatter particles. But if you are you know, a little bit more seasoned with uh, scatter. You've kind of, you know, experienced this before. You maybe have a couple other asset libraries that you've developed with scatter in the past. There is this amazing biome scatter here, which saves a lot of time. So you can obviously scatter things by hand and you can get the job done. But if you wanted to save some time, cut some corners and kind of get an initial result that looks pretty good and then re refine from there as you see fit. If you click on open biomes, you can see I've got a bunch of different ones I've saved here uh, from a variety of different sources. And I can actually uh, link some of these uh, if people are interested as well. They're all over on the Blender market as well. Uh, a really fantastic library of these. And again, if you've not checked this add-on out already, this for me is kind of the golden standard for uh, scatter objects uh, in Blender. And I'm super thrilled to see that uh, B Production is actually working with them as well with the Cloudscapes add-on as well. So you see, I've got a whole bunch uh, already installed here. There are some that kind of come default with the Scatter Pro add-on. You get all these different biomes. And you know, at first glance, it shows you what this will look like, kind of just a thumbnail preview of what these different biomes will look like with a, a person for scale. So you can kind of see, you've got a, a nice mix of kind of bushes and, and foliage and you know a little bit larger scale ones like forest terrains and different things like that. Uh, but there are also a whole bunch of other ones that I've installed as well. Uh, there's ones from Grassblade that I've installed here that are really phenomenal. A bunch of different Evermotion ones here too. They've got a really fantastic library. Uh, a, a really fun one from this uh, crew that is uh, called Asset Kit. They've got this Mossy Grounds one and then a Trash Kit as well too, which I don't find myself using as much. I find myself using their Mossy Grounds quite a bit in my scenes. And then one that I've really been enjoying quite a bit is the TerraScans crew. They've done some really nice scans of different beach elements. And I'm gonna actually do another redux of a tutorial I did a couple years back for the Sandy Room. I'm actually gonna incorporate some of their amazing add-ons uh, when we design that scene too. So definitely check those other ones out as well. Little plug for them. Uh, there's also some integration with Terrascape, which is great too. And a little bit with Vegetation, which is another of B Productions add-ons, if you've not checked this one out as well. Uh, they have a phenomenal library of plants as well, also up on their profile. So if I go over to uh, the B Production page here, let me just click over on their uh, website here. Uh, this is actually their website. I wanna go to their Blender Market. I'm gonna go here. Uh, you have a bunch of different ones here. This is actually ones that are pulling from the Vegetation and their Grass Blade. Uh, these two really nice ones here. They've got a bunch of different plants uh, that are actually uh, able to be animated as well. So another great add-on to check out from B Production too. So just a little plug for that one as well. Um, so these are, again, all the different biomes that you can use uh, with Blender, with Geoscatter specifically. Um, and this is for Geoscatter, yeah, Dr. S Prime. This is specifically for Geoscatter uh, to create these. So let me just X out of this for a second. So let's actually scatter in some of these cloud presets. Uh, and another way, sorry, I kind of glossed over this, but to install new uh, biomes in here, there's some documentation on this. Um, but if I open back up those biomes here, um, and you click on the scat pack, this is what you kind of get when you download the uh, Geoscatter scat packs. It's kind of this specific file name. And if you want to import new ones, you can click on file, install a scat pack, lo locate where that is, uh, and it will actually import it in based on the uh, location of your uh, assets in this asset browser here. So you actually have to first uh, unzip this folder, make sure all the clouds are in a folder specifically, and then you can install the scat pack. So now I've got the cloud one uh, in here now too. So if I go up here, you can see I now have my Cloudscapes scat pack installed. And you can kind of get a preview here too of the 29 different biomes that they have uh, for the clouds. And you might be wondering, okay, well, you just saw how you scattered, you know, a, a little cylinder here on the train. You just saw how you scattered in some of these different plants and things like that. How do you scatter clouds in your scene? Clouds don't really scatter on planes, and especially as you were just seeing in that biome preview, 
they scatter you know above your terrain here in the environment so let me just turn this off rendered mode because this gets a little bit dense sometimes when you're starting to pull these in here so let me actually so i've got this plane selected here i'm going to go over to my different biomes here and let's maybe just choose uh cloudscape uh i want one with some contrails here let's do cloudscape 15 so we get these kind of jet trails here so it'll take a second to import here and you can see it's doing a lot of stuff on the back end over here actually bringing in some geo nodes uh, to make this a a really cool integration with Blender's new Geo uh, nodes feature. And so you'll be kind of wondering, you're like, okay, great. So I've imported this in. I don't see anything, right? Like where, where is everything? Um, so it's actually clipping it right now. So if I actually go into my plane and then start to scale this up a bit, uh, you'll start to see stuff appear usually in the frame. It's kind of clipped off. There we go. Now it's clipping up. But what you'll see is it's now actually clipping beyond what my camera in my viewport is able to see. And I'll, I'll be running into a similar issue with my camera actually here as well too. So let me just tab out of edit mode for a second. I'm going to go over to the uh, view properties here. And you have this clip start, clip end uh, for your viewport. So what you're seeing right now is uh, a thousand meter difference between me and where this clipping is starting here. So it's actually kind of cutting off uh, where everything is here in the scene. So I actually need to crank this up. Let's just make it something insane, like nine, I don't know, nine million, whatever, da, 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 da. So now you're actually seeing it. So now it's much more snapped out here and also answering uh, Moonsys. This video will be available to rewatch later. So if you're falling asleep like Mr. Glissy is uh, over in the chat uh, and you're not going to be able to stay on for too long and you don't want to miss this, it will definitely be up later on my channel for you to rewatch. And once again, I want to thank anyone who is now rewatching this video later after it's posted. Thank you for tuning in here. So we just actually adjusted the clipping setting here, but that is only adjusting it for our viewport. So you're not seeing anything actually in our camera mode here. And actually, let me just move this back here. So it would actually be in front of our camera. You're not seeing anything in the camera because our camera clipping is also actually ending even closer. It's only at 100 meters. So we're also going to crank this one up quite a bit here too. So now you're actually seeing the end of this plane, but it's still not showing all of it. So let's just kind of scale this up a bit more. Uh, and you should actually start to see a lot more of these clouds starting to appear in the scene as we are now seeing there. So we actually have all these different clouds showing up. And as you continue to zoom out, more and more clouds will show up. But a fair warning, once we click over into rendered mode, this is going to really slow down immensely. And I hope this doesn't uh, crash on me here because we have a lot more volumetrics in our scene here. So let's just give this a shot. Uh, and there we go. It actually loaded pretty quickly here. I'm actually going to turn back on denoising just so we are not fighting through noise as we see this here. But you see our clouds are now imported in our scene and they're actually showing up at the different altitudes, uh, actually where they would be in real life, which is really awesome. Uh, so super, super cool to kind of see this uh, stratified like this, which I really, again, appreciate. The inner atmospheric scientist in me is very excited to see this because this is, you know, important to have these kind of physically based, physically accurate uh, depictions of clouds. And, you know, from there, you can get a little bit more surrealist. But what's great about this is so obviously we brought these clouds in. But we're using the geoscatter nodes here so we can actually adjust which clouds we want. So say we actually didn't want those smoke trails after all, I can just turn them off. And now they're no longer a part of the scene here. And just like that, you can turn them back on again. You can also adjust the distribution of these as well too, which you know is kind of great. I wouldn't tweak with this too much because I feel like out of the box, it already looks pretty good to me. The main thing you can actually be tweaking is just that scaling of this plane. And if you don't want to be seeing the plane in here, you can actually just you know disable it here. Uh, you know, just turn it on and off or, you know, just turn it off here because what's actually driving this is uh, outside of the viewpoint here. So you are actually uh, having this kind of scattered geo node here taking care of what you're seeing here. But obviously, if you want to select this and make changes, you do need to be able to select that plane and make those changes here. So this is fantastic, honestly. It's really cool. And I'm, I haven't really experimented too much with uh, the geo scatter aspect. I've mainly just been using the individual clouds in my scene. But just having that feature is pretty awesome. And uh, I see a question from uh, Davey in here. How heavy are the clouds? You just got to see there, it's a little bit uh, intense here, obviously, as you're kind of bringing things in here. But my tip is always, if you're starting to run into some render problems, have a, have a look initially to see kind of generally what this is going to look like in your scene. And then you can you know turn these on and off in the viewport and kind of isolate specific layers. So if I just wanted to look at just the smoke trails and make sure that those were looking you know prim and proper for my camera, I can adjust that and then turn back on the other ones. And it loads up pretty quickly. You can see that's pretty quick, which again is fantastic that it's pretty optimized because generally VDBs are very dense, very heavy, uh, can often crash your scene. I've run into issues with other render engines uh, running this kind of stuff. 
And also a little bit about some of the renders that you've seen on my page on my Instagram at James underscore films before. A lot of the cloud renders were actually not made in Blender. They're actually made over in Cinema 4D with a render engine called Redshift. Uh, because what I like about Redshift is you have complete control over the render settings. You can really just go into the most minute details, even like individual texture parameters. Like you can look at just the reflectance of one specific material on one specific object and change the number of samples that your render is going to be throwing at that specific texture. It is super nitty gritty. It takes a while to set up, but the results are phenomenal. And I just was not able to get that same result with Blender with Volumetrics for the longest time. I feel like with later versions of Blender here, new ones that have come up it's so much better and as you're seeing already right now this is just looking phenomenal to me it's really just kind of revolutionizing what is possible with blender with volumetrics and i remember really wanting to do this kind of stuff in blender because i have a lot of other stuff already integrated already modeled in blender i've got other assets that i kind of go to quite a bit that are specifically for blender not for my other software that i use uh, so it's just nice to work in Blender, and obviously Blender is a free software, so when I'm making tutorials, it's more accessible for you as well to do this kind of stuff. I, I don't want that huge barrier for entry that a lot of software has, where it's obviously pretty pricey to you know get a license for Cinema 4D and Redshift. Blender is free. You know, it's super easy to just download it and start playing around with. So this is the reason why I kind of want to work more in Blender and seeing stuff like this. It's phenomenal. It's very exciting. You know, I'm very optimistic for the future of this software here. So let me just talk about the last piece of this video, which if I go back over to the add-ons page here, let's go to the Cloudscapes. We're going to talk a bit about the texture specific setup for the clouds. I kind of showed you a little bit of adjusting the density of the clouds, but let's talk a bit more about the crazy shader, as he puts it here, uh, to adjust the temperature and kind of the smokiness of these clouds. So let's just bring in one more cloud here too. Let's try a different one here. Let me just do... Uh, let's see, which one do you want to do? Uh, I really love these ones, actually, these super high altitude Cirrus Stratus. These are ones that you kind of see the super wispy ones way up in the atmosphere. Uh, they look really cool. Uh, but let's use something that's a little bit denser here, like the Cumulonimbus. These are often big thunderstorm clouds that are kind of punching the top of the atmosphere. If you ever see kind of the anvil shaped clouds out there in the wild, uh, oftentimes they're the uh, Nimbus Stratus clouds or Cumulonimbus clouds that are quite large, very vertically developed. And these are going to look great if you're just using this in your scene as like, you know, a smoke or a fog thing. Uh, so let me just scale this up here. And once again, it is flipped sideways. So I'm just going to hit RX 90, bring this in, and then just kind of rotate it so that we're seeing this properly through the camera here. So this is a, a huge cloud once again, but let's use this kind of as like a smokier looking feel to this. And let me also just add in some of those point lights back in here just so we can actually see the front of this cloud so it's not being completely lost in shadow. I'm going to just kind of scale this up here move this over a bit and then let's pull this over in front here and then I'm going to actually scale this up here quite a bit so let's make the radius like I don't know 25 or something huge and then crank the power up something enormous here maybe even larger we'll make this radius 25 so we've got this kind of really cranked up here super powerful thing here so you can kind of see it's throwing some light on the front here because my cloud is so large, it's not really showing as much, but we're getting enough. And so now I can actually go into the cloud parameters and the initial density is pretty high up here. Let me just kind of bring this back to one for a second here. And then you can adjust the temperature. So if I turn this up or down, it's going to have a variety of different effects on our uh, cloud. Let me actually turn off the sun here so we can actually see what we're doing with a sky texture because you'll be able to notice these changes quite a bit more with that. Let me just turn off the point light here. So we've got this in here. Oh yeah, so sorry, I missed one question here too. Does this add-on allow for custom imports? I think you mentioned folders before, uh, own clouds. Yeah, so you can actually uh, define your own scat packs as well too, if you wanted to kind of go that way. Uh, there's some documentation that kind of goes into detail about how you set those specific files up. It's a little bit of a workaround to get to it, but it will allow you to do that. But also you can also scatter your, your own files uh, with all the different presets in here too. So you've got all these different presets or you can create your own too. You can see this little customization feature. You can make your own presets, have fun with it. Uh, be a true artist with Blender. Um, so that is uh, a really fun thing to do as well too. So definitely check that out. Um, yeah, so certainly a lot of customization, which is great. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of tweak around here. So you can adjust a lot of these different parameters and you can change, let's see here, what am I gonna do? I wanna change the temperature back down. I'm not really seeing too much result for this one specifically. If you look at here, yeah, let's, let's see. In all fairness, I've not really changed these up too much to uh, just, oh, there we go, that's what I'm missing, right. Um, if you look here, 
their black body intensity and then also the temperature setting here. I always forget that there are additional things packaged with these clouds. So if I actually click over on the cloud object data properties here, you'll see there's an additional parameter here called density uh, that actually if you change this out here, this will actually uh, allow you to adjust the different settings with your uh, density parameter. Again, I'm not really seeing too much here. I'm not sure why that. There we go. Okay, now it's now it's starting to glow. We're getting kind of the fiery glow of this cloud here. Um, uh, at least there's it's looking a little bit white, but you can change uh, kind of the different settings here to kind of get different results. Yeah, so I'm not sure why this is not going as well. Okay, yeah, there we go. That is changing up there. You can see there's kind of a bluish tint to it here. I want to crank this up a bit more. Yeah. This is, I think, a little bit glowing a little bit too much here. So now it's not really seeing it as much. Yeah, it's like really glowing. You can see even with the light off, it's glowing a bit too much. So uh, I actually probably want to turn this down a bit. So now it's super smoky looking. Slowly bring that black body intensity up. And then we change this back to temperature. And then adjust that. Uh, yeah, okay. You rose light moon comments with the dreamy renders you make. I honestly can't wait to see how you use these clouds in your scene. Yeah, I'm super excited, honestly, to kind of do more scenes with these clouds. I've done quite a few, like I said, in Cinema 4D before uh, with Redshift, but not really in Blender just yet. So it's kind of cool to, you know, make the jump over. And I've started to kind of mock up some scenes uh, just practicing with these cumulus clouds, which I find myself really using the most because I feel like they just are the most daydreamy looking clouds. And I love this library that they have. You can kind of combine a couple too to kind of make an interesting little product here. You know, kind of all bring these in together and, you know, fill out the room a bit with it. So you kind of have these different clouds like sitting on the floor, or even just like hovering in the air a bit too in your scene. It just looks really nice. Uh, so I'm really excited to kind of continue to play around with these types of clouds and really just make some awesome dreamy scenes. It's so much fun to do this in Blender specifically now and just really enjoying the kind of process of, of designing these types of things and really just having a blast with it. Uh, so you can see just this really cool result, super simple, just adding in one point light and having these clouds here. You get this really interesting separation and just imagine this with like a room in the background here. So I've got a bunch of different things that I've actually modeled up uh, myself here. Uh, let me just refresh this, where is this here? If that's not gonna load, okay, my stuff is, failing on me here in Blender for some reason. Um, oh, there we go, okay, yeah. So I've modeled up some archways and stuff uh, just on the back end. I've actually released a couple of these assets over my Patreon. Uh, I'm gonna be releasing some more stuff there soon too. Um, but, you know, I've got these like different archways and stuff that I can like bring in and, you know, kind of put the clouds in between or just do something kind of cool with. So I'm really very excited to kind of continue to play around with these types of things and, and have fun, you know, just kind of adding in uh, these different elements and different clouds that kind of really make these scenes so much more dreamy. Uh, with just a few clicks, honestly, just having these kinds of things in here. So I'm gonna sign off here soon. I just wanted to really quickly go through this add-on here. This is phenomenal. Once again, I'm just gonna put this up here on the screen so you can see where to find this. Uh, it's also linked in the description of this video if you wanna check that out as well. It is the Cloudscapes Hyper-Realistic VDB Clouds Collection from the one, the only B Production consistently, once again, putting out some incredible content. Uh, this, as I said earlier, is on a discount here for the launch offer, 25% off. Uh, definitely check it out. Again, linked in the description to find that. It works with Eevee as well. Today we just worked with Cycles, which I feel like looks the best in general, but it is over on the Blender Market. Phenomenal add-on, very, very fun to play around with. Definitely recommend checking that out in the future. Uh, and so if you're watching this uh, after the live stream, thank you so much for tuning in. If you are watching during the live stream, thank you so much for everyone who has joined here tonight. Definitely excited to do more of these in the future and I'm open to any suggestions that you have for future live streams that you wanna see, uh, breaking down different add-ons, working through scenes. As I mentioned earlier, I've been doing a lot more live streams over on Instagram. I've got kind of a nice streaming setup over there. Uh, and I'm gonna to start to kind of, you know, maybe a couple times a week jumping on there just quickly to answer some viewer questions and walk through a scene. So very excited to have you join over there as well. And I will catch you on the next one. Be sure to subscribe for more tutorials and I will see you later. Thank you so much.